Now, you, you said something I'm not quite understanding. You said, theoretically, I should be able to use my phone without even touching it. Now, what does that mean exactly? I'm not understanding what that means. It means that with certain models of certain Android phones, uh, certainly the Moto phones and the, uh, the, Nexus, the, the more recent Nexus phones like the 6P and all that, they are what they call always on, even if I turn my phone off. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, and I've now shut it off. It'll occasionally show the time if I get an email and show me a notification. And I should be able to tell it, um, read me the email. I should be able to tell it to send Would it off like this? Like mine is off right now. Yeah. If I just... Yours, this one, I don't You don't know. know. No, in fact... Turn I'm on my flashlight. See, not no, well, first you have to address it. I'll have to name my phone. Well, here, well no, no, no. Yours, a, a, you can't name that phone. You I can name know. a Moto. Oh, okay. And only a Moto. This is a Motorola thing, not a Google thing. Oh. This comes from when Google owned Motorola. Okay. But you can say, okay, Google, and get it to turn on. Okay. And you have to go to your operating system. Okay, Google. No, no, it's already on. Okay. Now, what would I say? Uh, turn on my no, camera. No, no, no. Let me say, turn on my camera. Turn on my camera. No, it's a song. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, 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 you're not, you're, 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 and you're recording right now, which you don't want to be doing. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. You need to name your phone. You need to give it the voice recognition. So you have to go into your operating system. But no, not this. This is not your operating system. That's your app drawer. Pull down. Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Go into the gear. Um, SIM cards, data usage, sound and notification, perhaps. It varies from phone to phone. Um, let's see, the device is locked. That's good. But no, keep it. Okay, no, that's not, that's not it yet. Go back one. Text heat. You don't have to touch it to make it work. Somewhere. Oh, oh, we just did sound notification. Users? Uh, no. Ah. Customization? Very possibly. Customization. Dark mode. Accent color. Status bar. No, it's not those. No. Buttons, gestures. Uh, location, security, fingerprints, language, and input? No. Accounts, Google, backup, reset. This phone may not have that capability. About phone system. Okay. Your Moto G will. And for the Moto G, the nice thing with the Motos is that you can name your phone anything you darn well please. Yes, because I'm, what, what, with my Moto G, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually going to give this away. I'm going to use this one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this away to a kid. Uh, that's Be sure that you take all your data off of it yeah. first. It's manually. Boom, 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 boom. No, you have to delete your account. Uh, you have to delete your accounts and then from a computer go to your Google device manager and tell it this is no longer your phone. Otherwise they can access all kinds of stuff. Okay. Okay. Now you're doing pattern, okay? Well, here. I do, uh, yeah. This is I do fingerprint on this one. Yeah. Okay. I uh, go... Go to the gear. Yeah, we'll try, let me look at language and uh, go back up a little. Let me see language and then put there. Okay, keyboard, voice typing. No, it's not there. It can be hard to find this shit. Moto private? Motorola private? No. This is not about your privacy. It's about naming your phone. Let me go back to your... Try, try some notifications. Mm -hmm. mm. No. 
So usually when you're setting up your phone, it'll ask you to do this. Mm. Hmm. Okay, well, I have to find out. I'll do, I'll do a YouTube search or something. But at, and at any rate, because this is a moto, I named it Mr. Moto. <laughs> and so all I have to do to get it working is uh, Mr. Moto, navigate home. This is, she gave this to us. So I just just go through all this stuff. Check this out. All right. I feel like names are important. And that's it, so. Am I driving, walking, bicycling? I'm going to take public transportation. But I, I didn't get to it quite in time. So it's just giving you the maps. Yeah, but now it can here. Whoops. Let me go back one. There. I want to take public transportation. Now. Mm. Take the train into the X27, which is what you take, right? Yeah, I prefer to take the bus. But I can also just walk from here to the yard. Train. Take it to the last stop. And tell me when the next train is coming, etc., etc. Mm. And note, all I did was say navigate home. Hmm. I, I, to come here, in fact, when I got off the bus, it warned me that I was coming to the Spring Street stop, and then I said switch to walk. I had it in my pocket, and so I said walk southeast on Spring Street, and I did, and then it said make a right on Green Street. I said, okay, your destination should be on the left, and I was here. Wow. I didn't touch the freaking phone. You ever see the movie Her? No, I've heard about it. But... It's a great movie. Very underrated. The science fiction community didn't even understand it. it because it goes very deep. It's basically, if you take, are we recording? Yeah. If you take the philosophy, if you take the idea that your operating system mm -hmm. can soon exist without having a phone, right? Mm -hmm. It's ju it's now just a device that you can put in your ear. Mm -hmm. It's just like you know, a Bluetooth device or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's just talking to the cloud, whatever, wherever, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You put that in your ear. And the premise of this movie is that these things are so personalized and so much they take your total personality and everybody starts falling in love with their devices. But that's not the important part. The important part is that they are learning from you and they think so much faster than people do and amassing information that they are well beyond. They're dealing with the entire universe. At a certain point, we don't. They don't need us. They may continue to love us, but we're like insects to them. And so the main character, her, who's got the voice in the movie, is Scarlett Johansson, and is dealing with Joaquin Phoenix, introduces. He says, "Are you talking to other people?" She said, "Oh yes." How many? Several thousand. And she said, "Let me introduce you to one who's been making." You think about things. And she introduces her user to Alan Watts 2.0. <laughs> and you start to realize this entire movie is actually about Alan Watts's philosophies and his ideas. It goes so totally beyond science fiction into the realm of the deep thinking of philosophy and the meaning of existence and life and what it is because these artificial intelligences are so far beyond us that they don't need us anymore. They're not going to deal with us anymore. They just leave. I may be giving away part of the movie. Mm, no, it's fine because interestingly enough, I, my last question to you was going to be, what what is this technology going to be like in two or three years? You know, because I'm not going to make you know like like that. I've said two or three years, but you can say twenty or thirty years. It's twenty or thirty years is more to the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, her is a good example of it. But remember that all I'm dealing with is fiction. You know, one has to really talk to Come the on. people, who, but the people who work for these companies 
are reading the same fiction that I. That's what I'm trying to say. What happens? You, here's what you know the story. Uh, the, the the Star Trek, beam me up, or or the the, the flip phone, or whatever. Have it. This is. It's because some kid wants Star Trek, and when they got older and they, they ran a company, they can make the flip phone. They said, I want a tricorder, and that's where this came from. Mm -hmm. It really did, because the people who created the first Android phones specifically uh, uh, specifically said, I'm making a tricorder. Before that was the Palm Pilot, and they, they had a tricorder. They had a thing that totally transformed the look and feel of the device, mm. of the Palm Angel device, mm. to look like and make all the little Star Trek bloop sounds mm -hmm. and all that. This is a tricorder. So, uh, and we got it a lot sooner than the 23rd century. Well, here's the interesting thing. Then, is it, is it, isn't it the fact that stories, stories drive humanity? Yes. Or people's, people's stories that, that we make up drive humanity rather than anything else. It's not just technology driving us. We're driving it through our stories and then somebody hears that story. So, so if, you're, if you're in Bangladesh, if, if you're here and you hear a Bangladeshian story, we're going to then, and you you want to act on it, that's going to inform the entire world. And, and you that's won't exactly know it right. From that's then. exactly right. I read science fiction, and I look at science fiction not because I want to find out what Spider-Man is going to do, or Iron Man, or or Ms. Marvel, or any of these. Or Ant-Man, my or Ant-Man. Yeah, he's pretty my, my, cool, my, actually. My but, current favorite. I know everybody likes Deadpool, but forget Deadpool. Ant-Man is my. Ant -Ant when he go, becomes Giant Man, <laughs> or is that a spoiler for people who haven't seen Civil War yet? No, no, no. But for me, okay, first of all, there is more philosophy, more things in this world, like in Sita Sings the Blues, Indian thought, Asian thought. Science fiction has so far been very, very, very American. But, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of African but, stuff that's amazing. Well, African stuff is starting, has been coming into science fiction since the turn of the millennium, since about 2000, mm. uh, with writers, and before that, with writers like Samuel R. Delaney and Octavia Butler. But then there became a boom, so we've got writers like Nora Jemison, N.K. Jemison, excuse me, Nora, um, and uh, a lot of brilliant, brilliant uh, black writers, but now people start realizing that Borges was writing science fiction all along, and that's a different kind of philosophy, a different way of thinking, and these are all correct ways of learning and expanding your mind, and what is they all have in common, whether they're discussing fact or fiction, they're stories. They're telling stories. They're yeah. telling stories. It's all about storytelling. The best science fiction come out of the cultures with folk tales, with stories. You have the African storytellers and all of those traditions behind that. India is an endless place. And now we're starting to get translations of Chinese mm. philosophy into not only fantasy, but science fiction as well. What, what, what would castinate us in the, those kind of... Uh, those, um, yeah, Latino, magical realism. Magical realism, that. yeah. but that's still storytelling, and, and is that... What else is it? Yeah. yeah. That's storytelling at its best. Mm. Borges, Castaneda, I'm, I'm a big Borges fan. Mm. Uh, uh, Marquez. Mm. Mm. You know, A Hundred Years of Solitude yeah. isn't science fiction. Of oh. course it is. Yeah. But understand that science fiction, we've had this talk before, is just a word that encompasses all thoughts fantastic. Yeah. This is a story, oh my goodness, um, from uh, W.E.B. Du Bois. Yes. He wrote a science fiction story about yes. this guy that got locked in this vault and he came up and nobody was around. That's I, right. I did. I was sort of. I'd never read the entire story. I just because I, I didn't. Well, get the read entire the entire story. story. It's in a book called Dark Matter: uh, Tales from the Hundred Years of uh, Stories from the African Diaspora, edited by Cherie Renee Thomas. Is 
one of the, I'd say, five or six books that totally changed science fiction. It was published in 2000, mm. and uh, the, she's got everything from a lot of new writers that people had never heard of mm -hmm. uh, writing science fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, and she has encouraged mm -hmm. people that never would have thought of writing science fiction to start writing it. Uh, to follow the thoughts of, well, say, Octavia Butler, who simply said, I wanted to read about people who look like me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that book, Dark Matter, mm. totally, totally, totally changed the field. And the field is now at, so let's, let's, let's call it, uh, Dark Matter 2.0. There are now people who are the next generation who are writing who haven't heard of the book Dark Matter, although it's only recently come out in ebook format. But she has the Du Bois story. She, so she not only got a lot of new people to write in there and got a lot of people who've never written science fiction to write science fiction, like Walter Mosley, Mm -hmm. But she also mined the field of literature. She's an academic, she reads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she mined the field of science fiction and found all these stories from people like Du Bois and so forth that you would never have thought before mm -hmm. were writing it. And she just exploded my mind. There are very few books that have done that. Uh, and have changed the entire genre mm. in such a wonderful way. Mm. Um, but that book, Dark Matter, is the latest one. There hasn't been one since 2000 mm. that has really done that. And now we're seeing an influx of Asian science fiction, but it's almost happening on its own without one editor forcing that. Although Clark's World magazine is doing their share of it, and so is Lightspeed magazine, mm -hmm. um, largely through a fellow by the name of Ken Liu, L-I-U, mm -hmm. who is a translator, programmer, novelist, young guy, Harvard graduate, I loathe him. Mm -hmm. This is somebody who's just too wonderful. He's excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and a very nice guy to boot. <laughs> okay, Jim. I and his latest novel, by the way, is called *The Grace of Kings*. But the but the absolute must-read book is *Dark Matter*, edited by Cherie Renee Thomas. Can't say that often enough. Thank you, Jim.